Welcome back, Bonnet Heads. How are you? Uh, we are here today. I I'm just going to get right to it. We have your listener questions. You've been amazing. I'll introduce myself. Hi, I'm Pamela Bob. I'm the creator and star of Living on the Prairie and, you know, your host for this podcast. I am here with our wonderful, beloved prairie bitch, Alison Arngram. Hello, Alison Arngram. Oh, no. <laughs> Allison that? tends to be late for these podcasts, okay. but but oh no, I see a little crawly thing. Here we go. She's under the table again, like a like an animal, like a nocturnal animal, just stunned into the light. There she is. <laughs> Allison, are you okay? <laughs> She's so tired, back. I'm back. She's tired. Ish. She's been a busy girl, which we'll hear all about. <laughs> But most importantly, yes. today, the day that we are recording, this is Tuesday, June 25th, the day of our Prairie Man's book release. That's right. We're here with my hashtag imaginary boyfriend, published author. It's official now. Dean <laughs> Butler. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, what a what a fun day! What an adventure this has been. As I I wrote a note to uh, to the editor at uh, at Kensington and the publicist at Kensington and Harlan Bowl, who I've been working with, and and Jen Brailer, who is my social media director, and said this is the end of the beginning. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I it, feel it's, like it, Simi it's, Valley was like climbing the mountain and then your book was also like the next peak yeah for yeah sure. yeah but where but the book's concerned more. it's the end of the beginning and now right. it's now we have to make something of it now that it's now that it's out I, launched i, I yeah launched. Launched. i mean well allison you've been through this i mean I, you, you've done this so. i told you flat out before you did this i said having having a book if it is successful even like remotely successful as opposed to like giantly successful which let's face it come on that it's gonna be um i said my book tour was like being strapped chained to the front of a roller coaster and they turn it on and then after you go through a few times it slows down for a moment and they say do you need a sandwich or something and they hand you a sandwich a drink of water and then they turn it back on again and this goes on for several weeks at a time oh boy so i said that that's what it's like if you're good with that you'll be fine well and i think that and boy it, that is something you are wired to do thank I mean, god that's that is <laughs> that is who you, you are you can too, do that Dean. yeah you uh, can i for uh, months now. I mean, I don't know how you're doing it all. It's you got nuts. Yeah. Thrown it's been, in the it's deep been end. A, it's been a busy. It's been a busy time, but an amazing time. And um, and to see that when the when the first box of books arrived and I opened it up and saw it there in hardcover, uh, and Allison, yes, you've got yours. Uh, uh, crack. It's it's really amazing to see this process come into existence. You know, we're so used to the our world now where we can speak into a microphone and really if we wanted to push this out live right now it could be going out live right now the fact is mm -hmm. it will drop in two days but we're so used to that instantaneous thing with a book you know the publisher said to me you can have it out anytime you want it as long as we have it a year ahead of time and that's Jeez. you know so that's sort of the world you're in there i don't know what was your what was your turn time Allison? oh god it seemed like forever um I handed in my chapter and said, okay, go. And then it was about eight or nine months of me going clack, 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 clack. And then... Oh, so you were rewriting for eight or nine months. Well, I did eight or nine months, wrote, handed that in. Yeah. And then it took them... They were late coming back with their notes. And so my agent said, she gets more time to do the rewrites because you were late coming back. So then they come back and go, we, can you more of this, more of that, less of this, more of this, wow. cut this. Yeah. And wow. Okay. And wow. then I, uh, I was assigned an editor or assistant. She, of course, she didn't say... Here, let me fix that for you. She said, hmm, I think you should merge these four chapters. I've merged these two. Here, write 10 pages and call me in the morning. Bye. And I went, I, that, wait, no, wait, there's more work. Right. I thought that meant less Ten. work. No, it meant more work. And so then there was about eight months of that. Oh, so there was wow. many, many months of that. Wow. And then, so then there was- well over a year. Yeah, it was over a year total from time of here we're doing this too, yeah. and then then there was the talking to legal that took three days. You can read my book; it three it did it did many hours long conversation. Yeah, then there yeah. was like hours on the phone discussing which shade of hot pink the cover should be with the art department, <laughs> my agent, and about that was like seriously we're having this conversation. Um, but they picked we it picked is, the right one. It is all clearly thing. clearly. Um, but yeah, it was bonkers. And then oh wait, we need a forward. Oh wait, we need an epilogue. Oh wait, could you do Jesus? Right. 
to hide the body. Right, it and goes then it, on and, and on. And then finally it was done. Yeah. But it seemed forever. Yeah. But yours seemed quick, Dean, because in January you were like, I'm writing a book. And I was like, oh, great. And you're like, done by June. And I was like, what? That's the fastest turnaround I've ever heard. Well, it, it was supposed to be June and it ended up being another month. So I turned it in, in Ju on July 31st of 23. There and you then, And then the, the serious tweaking the picture selections, the legal review, all the things that Allison's talking There's about. That's the, yeah. That, yeah. You know, That's all of that happened. I think we probably actually locked it. It was fully locked at the end of January of 24. There you go. That's about right. Yep. Yeah. That's about right. And, and, and That's here it. we are. It and, still seems fast, although this yeah. year has been like one of the yeah, no, it's been years it's been an ever. incredibly fast no, year. that sounds totally because it was the famous last thing I had to write. Could you write an epilogue, wrap it all up? Was December two thousand nine, and then it came out June of twenty ten. So there that was go. the last typing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so the yeah. question is, how do you feel? And Allison, do you remember how you felt the morning of your book launch? Did you sleep? Did either? No, of you no. Well I was. I'm, I'm, I. The whole entire process: meeting with my agent, meeting with the publishers, having the publishers, t having my agent tell me how much he was asking for, having them, t <laughs> then having the publisher say yes, <laughs> then doing it, then getting the thing, and then having it done. Yeah. I was hyperventilating and sweating and having anxiety attacks and flailing about the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think. Once I set out to write it, it was became it became the process of getting up at five o'clock every morning and and having the hot cup of coffee and the outline mm -hmm. open and moving through it and I, you know the, the final draft that Allison has there is just over ninety three thousand words. My first draft was two hundred and twenty thousand. Oh, words. you're terrible! You're like me. I got up to one hundred and thirty thousand <laughs> words, and my agent said, "Put down the manuscript and step away from the computer, and stop, I'm stop her before she kills again." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, but as I as I've said to people, I had an editor following along behind me, so I'm submitting chapters yep. as I'm writing them, and I'm getting cleaned. Edited chapter. There you go. <laughs> a little tidy tidy. Back as you know, as I'm going along. So it it was definitely there, you know, there was teamwork involved in this, but but what we what we started with was what was coming out of my head and and at two hundred and twenty to ninety three thousand <laughs> words. And I think that was probably a really good thing. Yeah, that, I, I handed in my, I was sending chapters to like my agent along the way, who's well versed in publishing. He was like, yes, yes, good direction, more of that, yes, yes, yes. And then when I got to 130, it's like, good God, stop. And then we sent that in and they went, this is not the Encyclopedia Britannica. Are you crazy? We we're shooting for 70,000. You're out of your mind. You're not Barbara Streisand. Yeah, yeah, you're not Barbara Streisand. Audio audiobook is 48 hours <laughs> exactly. long. Right? Her, I'm sorry. Her, yes. her, her audio, audio book is yes. 48 hours long? Yes, it is. 48 hours. And Mine I came in at 10 hours, second. 7 minutes. That's about yeah. correct. My she, she 48 she hours? Wrote a Bible. Yeah, and it's spectacular. Yes, because she suggested. was like, Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it is amazing. What do you mean, cut? I'm yeah, right. 48 hours. Well, I don't think an editor is going like, Barbara, we've had enough of your story. Cut it cut it down. No, Could you cut this no, whole chapter, Barbara? No, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> and I was told, no. They did. And, and okay, here's the wow. thing. Did you find that stuff you went, oh, well, they'll probably cut that. And then things you thought, oh, this is really good. They went, yeah, that was totally boring. We're cutting that. And then the things you said, they'll cut this. They went, this is great. Could you extrapolate more on this particular story? Mm. And you're like, mm. seriously, that was the thing you liked? I, I had that happen. Yeah, I I think what I got when I was writing it, I thought I was sort of you know venting in some of this, mm -hmm. and 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 I decided this after it was done, I think this needs to go, this needs mm. to go. I mean, I got it out of my system. This can go away now. Right. And what are yeah, the purposes? It was more for you, right? <laughs> Certainly, right, in right. Hollywood, of an right. autobiography is to many autobiographies right. are to settle scores. This is yeah, and this known was to not. To, yeah, of course, and and that should not be. I I don't think it's that that's thing. what anybody who would read my book is looking for a score it's not settling your style. thing. It's, it's just, just not. not you. It's not. Yeah, no, it's no, not, it's not me. Now, maybe does Barbara settle scores? She tells some truths about people that it's you're like, polite. oh, oh, she's telling, oh, she's exposing so and so, oh. like, you know, Mandy Patinkin and you know her co-star and funny girl, not not flattering at all, and that you kind of go, 
Ooh, okay, but <laughs> but she doesn't also, savage them. Does she savage anybody? Really? No, no, she didn't. It was just what happened, right? Like sure. it, she wasn't going for personal attacks. It wasn't. It was just like, yeah, this is. What well, happened. and she's been she's been savaged plenty. Uh, hello, yeah. through, through the years. So yeah. she I mean, would have yeah. right to. Sure, yeah. of course. And that's of the course. thing. That's what legal that's department will tell you. Yes. Legal department will say, saying I don't like someone is not actionable. You yeah. can't have the judge make her right. like me. That's not a thing. Right. If you say yeah. something specifically bad about someone that could affect their life, their employment, or something real, or, or and that you don't have proof of in some way, then you got a problem. But if you just go, you know, I work with them, and 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 we, we didn't like each other very much. That that's not a thing. You can It's it was legal. Also go like go for almost it. sixty years ago. I mean, it was a lot. Uh, you know, for a funny girl at least, wow. or you know, with Mandy, wow. it was forty wow. years ago. Wow. And there may and if there's witness, ago. if there's wow. like a bunch of crew members backing her up going yeah it completely happened i was there then yeah, yeah. Questions. i, I will so many say questions. that so we're, we're gonna do listener questions yes, good, good. um allison also we're gonna talk about your uh escapades at the the french um, revolution monte carlo. The, yes the, the monte carlo revolution. report <laughs> live from monaco <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> From the studios of UBN Go in Burbank, California, it's a special event podcast. This is the Little House 50th Anniversary Podcast on Book Launch Day. Woohoo! Okay, I'm going to get to it. I'm pulling up the questions. We had such a lovely talk on Facebook Live, Dean and I did, um, on Monday, and it was Great. And everyone, everyone posted their questions and participated in this chat. It was really lovely. Also, if you would like to see our discussion, which I really loved, Dean, I loved our discussion. Um, you can go, I think, Dean, you repost it. I reposted it on Prairie TV on mm -hmm. my socials. And you can go to the official Little House on the Prairie um, Facebook page. Right. And, they have and this is what we did this too. for. We did this for the for the official Little House on the Prairie dot com yeah. Facebook yeah. page, which, which is so a, we are thankful to Friendly Family Productions and uh, Amanda Knapper, who ran the conversation. Yeah, and, she was great. Yeah, yeah. So, no, and very nice for everyone to listen. I have no idea what, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people were there, but it was a very nice conversation. And we got some good questions out of it. So, yeah, we did. Bring them, bring them on. Bring more okay, questions. Let's bring them. Dean. What was it like? Oh, Patty, Judgy. Judgy? Is that really her name? No, Jude. I can't tell if it's Jude or Jude. Judgy. I'm kind of hoping it's Judgy. But anyway, <laughs> what was it like filming the scenes where Almanzo argues with Pa Ooh. when he wants Laura to wait until she's 18 to marry? I guess, in other words, what was it like working with tense scenes with Michael Landon? Uh, really, really, really good, actually. And I think those scenes all worked really. Uh, my recollection of those was that they worked very organically, and um, I, you know, I knew I felt I was comfortable with what I was supposed to be bringing. You know, I, I knew what my attitude was. My intention in those scenes was, I think, pretty clear. And um, he was, you know, Michael. When you were working with Michael. Where you, I, I've talked about this before, and I love the way Patrick Laverto talks about this. Michael, as an actor, would let you into his eyes. He would, he would really talk to you, if and you were really talking to him. That wasn't always the case off camera, where the Carrera sunglasses came <laughs> down, and you, and you really couldn't see into his eyes. But when he was acting with you, he was very present. So all of that was, all of that was really good. And Dean, I'm going to ask Allison this because we were talking about this on our other conversation. Allison, as a child actor on the show, did you feel that sort of disconnect with him? Like when when he was not acting, when he was in director mode or, you know, boss mode, did yeah. was there that same kind of like, oh, we don't approach Michael? Early on, I got immediately that he was extremely driven, like workaholic, wackadoodle, like I am doing this and this is all I am doing now kind of person, and which is cool. It's like, oh, hey, mad genius of the prairie but definitely mad genius and yeah. I got that right away wow this guy's on a roll he's and you don't interrupt anybody who's like that kind of mad genius on a roll you don't get in their way you get the that's a oncoming freight train it's like oh I see we'll just stay the hell out of the way out of that there yeah. and yeah. he would be very warm and charming and funny and engaging we'd have perfectly normal conversations but if he was on a roll he was on a thing or especially if he'd like 
as we started filming, said, we're on a tight schedule today. Today we're behind. Oh, let's not get in the way of that oncoming car. So you knew. I mean, and, and as I said, I grew up in Hollywood and I grew up on sets and rap. So it's like I saw seen this act. Um, and yes, if he was in that zone, you, you didn't. And, and as I always said, you know, did his lips disappear? Because then you, you might have a problem. Um, if he was really displeased, if he was getting tense, like he's trying to get something done and you were somehow not letting that happen. Oh boy! And then the nostrils. I can remember a kind of flare. I can remember. And a few suddenly times. he had he had no lips. His lips had snake lips. I had an ex boyfriend who used to call me snake lips because when I got mad, same thing happened. Really? <laughs> yeah, no lips at all. It's like oh, run, <laughs> run for your life. And and so the lips are going. Oh, this is not good. And it was just it was very simple. It's like is there a problem? No, there isn't. No problem. No, no problem at yeah, all. Yeah. yeah. I was like okay. And then he'd be fine later. To, sure. Um, but yes, when he was in the zone, uh, yeah, you just backed the hell off. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's interesting how he knew he needed to set up. He couldn't be pals, you know. Like he he had to maintain. It seems like he had to maintain boundaries. That no, he was still the boss, and he still had the say. And yet, he could be available to you when he needed to be available. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really interesting. Yeah. I would just want to be friends with everyone. It's my issue. Anyway, <laughs> Daphne Louis Endress asks, I saw an interview from a while back when you talked about your first scene with Melissa and you lost control of the buckboard <laughs> and Michael Landon came up to you and said you would get a double. I just rewatched Wilder and Wilder. And just curious, were you driving the buggy at all? It looked like you were some of the time and also riding the galloping horse when you went after Pearly Day at the end. Yeah, no, I think by there then was... you were more experienced with driving and riding horses. Right. I mean, I think there were always those yes I would say it's true in in part of all of those things, yes, the actor was doing the driving or the riding, and that was the case for me. I think where the shot was wider and where the speed was greater, um, he would put the double in the. That in, was a fast horse in that in, scene. In I the, remember that. Yeah, so it was he would put the he would put the double in because you just don't know what could happen. Yeah. So uh, I think it's just a function of being safe. Um, you know, you can get, you can get another double with all respect to the doubles. Mm. You can get another double. It's very difficult if you, if you break the actor, yeah. it's, it's a much harder thing. And, and with the, with an eye on production and timing as Michael yep. always had, as Kent McRae always had, you just wouldn't take unnecessary risks with well, people. Stunt people also know, they know what they're doing. And we had amazing stunt people. And of course with yeah. the kids, you had to have stunt people, my God. But yeah. it's true. So if an actor messes up with a buckboard, is the actor going to know how to jump clear and fall like from years of practice? Probably mm. not. Actors more likely to get hurt. A stunt mm. person, if something goes wrong, has had something go wrong thousands of times and leapt off of horses and buggies and is more likely to actually get away without injury than the actor. And if the actor's injured, well, now we have to stop shooting for however long. Right. Whereas the stunt person can say, well, I sprained my ankle. I'll be back in three weeks. Here's Earl to keep right. going the rest of the day. Right, right. And yeah, hello. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> So all of that. Yeah. And the stunt person is less likely to get hurt. That's the crazy part. I think part. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We're not Tom cruising it up. <laughs> no. It. I mean, it's amazing the stuff that he has done in his uh, career. It's all ego. But anyway, that's <laughs> a conversation. Well, we'll be hearing from Tom Cruise next week. <laughs> well, with you. I have issues with the Tom Cruise, but we'll, we'll talk about that at a different time. <laughs> okay. Let's move on with more questions. Oh, moving yes. on. Okay. I like this question. Okay. Ray Kevin asks, what was the first, and Allison, you can answer this too. What was the first Little House on the Prairie related event that you attended oh. that made you say, wow, I guess the show <laughs> is that big or was that big? Uh, I, wow. I, you know, I think for me it was probably a, some big network event where all the kids, mm. so you see suddenly you're in this place with all of these people who are starring in all of these shows that you're seeing in promos and on the mm. air, I think that's that's a pretty heady experience. It, it, it's sort of it's in a similar it's similar to when you're working in the Broadway theater and you do go to an Easter celebration or a ho and all the casts of all the shows are there yeah. and the energy in the space. Now, what's different is. 
a group of Hollywood people on the network, everyone is playing it very cool. In the in the Broadway theater, everyone is excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, we're, it, we're not it's shy. A, it's a very different energy, but you feel that you feel the size of the personalities. And and that I think was pretty cool. I think when I first started, Allison, maybe the show had just won a People's Choice Award. Ah, yes, and run going that to the People's Choice, all the cast was there, and that would have been a big moment, I would think. We went to stuff. I early on now, literally the very, 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 very first thing I went to was right before the show started. I just just started filming, and I wasn't supposed to be there. Oh, oh. that's right. Typical. Oh. Um, but my father, <laughs> we knew a guy. You, knew you crashed father. it. I, I crashed. The, I crashed your a party. Be the next crashed thing a party. Out of your mouth. Yeah, yes. my father. Okay. But we we knew a guy, and we knew a guy. A you French, know a guy. I always know a guy, <laughs> and legitimately he was there. So Jean Lorraine was with the foreign press and all that and legit and he said hey i got so many tickets you need to go to this i'm so getting you in or more, more, more rightly i have several tickets you still need to go to this um but so <laughs> indeed we did and we got all dressed up and we went now all the stars of the show the only person from little house who was famous yet was michael melissa sure. wasn't there because who right. was melissa gilbert at that second right. the only right. person from the waltons was will gear Wow. Because Michael Learned and Ralph Waite weren't household names yet, so Will Gear was representing the Waltons, wow. and Barbara Eden was there, and Mary Tyler Moore, and et cetera, wow. et cetera, and Karen Valentine, and all those people. And then the only person little was Michael, because who was anyone on the show sure. at that point? Sure. And so then I show up with my dad, like, <laughs> and um, beautifully dressed. I must say, we, we were very good. We dressed beautifully. And had my first really nice, expensive party dress. It was lovely. And, um, but Michael's face, it's it's in my book, the picture, and he's just like, oh, and you can see his beautiful smile, but like, how long did we all get into this? <laughs> um, yeah, but we got in, we got pictures with everybody. And so that was wild, realizing this is a big deal, that we're, yeah. and mm. we're not supposed to be here, but we're going to be. Now, my first event, my first event I went to that was big was a first year, me and Catherine McGregor, and because some NBC executive had a kid at the school, mm -hmm. said, can I go in, the, in costumes? And somebody said yes. And it was at a very, very fancy private school. So wow. Catherine and I- In, in costume. Yes, we but went down went to Paramount, wow. and we got makeup wow. and costume. They did us wow. up completely, hair and costume, and delivered us to this very expensive private school. It was clearly some network executive's kid. There was the only way that could happen. <laughs> and so we get there, and everyone hates us and is terrified of us, because we're in costume. And now we're scary. And Catherine's like, hello, little, she's making children cry. Children are crying and screaming and running away from Catherine McGregor because it's big, bad, Mrs. Olsen. And nobody's even speaking to me. And we signed zero autographs. We took some pictures. You were scowling at people, of course. Her. And just they didn't want to go anywhere near us. And then, and that's when the two little girls came up and kicked me and knocked me flat on the pavement. And I- yeah, Two little like girls came up and kicked, kicked me, laughing, laughing, running away. And I couldn't get up because petticoats. And, um- <laughs> My father came. I had, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. It you was really, could get up. It was really those things. It was like 20. <laughs> I had the layer, so I'm like, uh, 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 Stop her, it. her, trying to get up. And my father, I lost my hot dog and my Slurpee, and my father had to get me a new one. <laughs> you lost your hot dog. And I had your a hot Slurpee. dog and a Slurpee. Damn it! Did you and, spill it on the costume? No, thank heavens. You so threw it away me. like a instinct. bomb. Good actor away. instinct. Throw the <laughs> food away from the costume. <laughs> and my father got me a new one and new hot dog. So we went Everything home. Everything was fine. And he called them and said, we're never doing that again. <laughs> and, no, it's yeah. just a bad idea to have the villains come to where children are. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of, um, you know, the, who is Margaret, uh, the actress. The, the witch, the witch, 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 Yes, Margaret your Hamilton. hero, Margaret Mar Hamilton. Hell they yeah. Had to, they, she was on Sesame Street, yes. an episode of Sesame Street wow. that played once. And they had to ban it. It's never been played again because it traumatized the children so badly to see. And she wasn't in costume. I don't. I don't think. But she, she had that face. A, Although nothing, a, a, she didn't have that witch. nose. She did the laugh or something. Yeah. I think that's what. Wow. I, but she went on Mr. Rogers, where they did a thing of her in costume, out of come Mr. Rogers, yes. but like, see, I'm holding her hat. See, it's yeah, maybe not, they, he was trying. They to did a huge. It's not real thing of Mr. Rogers because of that. Because she was scaring the hell out of people. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I think she was the most convincing costume. villain as a kid. She was a traumatizing villain. Oh, absolutely. I think. She was absolutely. incredible. I loved her. Um, okay. So her. Another yes. question. Oh, prep with an E S. Pre My prep. dad. Oh, pre is it pre? Pre with an E? Pre, pre, pre with an E. Is it P R E P E E? Prep. -E. Prep. -E. Prep underscore with underscore and underscore E. 
My dad read in the TV guide oh. back in the 80s. Oh, Lord, that makes me feel so old. That wow. sentence makes me feel I'm, so I'm old. scared already. Assuming your dad would remember that he read the TV <laughs> guide back in the 80s. Go ahead. Because the 80s doesn't feel that very far away. Yeah, only 40-something years ago. <laughs> yes. Wow. Anyway, my dad read in the TV back guide back in the 80s. That you auditioned for the Adam Kendall role <gasps> is that true? No, that and that has been that has come up. And no, that's not true. Uh -huh. I didn't think so. No, I thought no, no, I didn't believe it. No, it would not. I would not have been the right casting for that. Not I mean, based that. on the way they went, I would not have been. You know, and we wouldn't have had the team Adam team Manly. Yeah, no competition that I won handily and. <laughs> You know, we just wouldn't have had that. I never no. believe that story. I went, that doesn't even make sense. No, I can't. No. I can't wait for Boomer to come on this show. I cannot wait. OK. Um, yeah. You weren't snarky enough for, no. for Adam. Adam was snarky. Um, OK. I like this question, too. All of these questions are good. I'll stop saying that before everyone. Don Skaggs asks. How often do you rewatch Little House episodes? What goes through your mind when you watch scenes with Almanzo? And Allison, I want you to answer this one too. So my answer to that is what's fun about seeing them now is I'm completely detached from what was going on <laughs> oh. at that time. <laughs> so, you know, in, when the shows first air and you're watching them, I'm rerunning not only what am I watching, but I'm rerunning all the stuff that was yeah. going on on that day, right. it's all very fresh. And you think, I'm never going to forget that. Now I watch the show, I have no recollection of what the process was. I mean, maybe in a few cases, but but general, I don't know what my mental state was during, you know, during a particular scene. So now I'm watching it and I feel like I'm watching it like a, a fan, anybody who's a, a viewer at home watching it it's a little closer than that but it's not the kind of microscopic analysis evaluation sweating over every moment so i when i watch it now i really enjoy it good good well, i had a come i had a conversation with you once this is a couple of years ago and we were talking about i think it was the the kiss scene and you you were very hard on yourself in that scene. I think oh. you had just recently watched it and you didn't think you were very good. And I was like, Dean Butler, shut your mouth. It's <laughs> the scene of the entire show. Are you kidding me? Millions of perfect. women going, are you kidding? I mean, it's I know, perfect. It's I perfect. Want, no, I wanted to be cool and I didn't, you know. But then there's this one, I think there's this one little curl on the side of my that, that's the I'm myopic the about that. The There's this one little curl on the side of my head. What is that doing there? It's cuteness. No, it's cuteness I got overload. it. I got it now. But at the time, I'm thinking, well, I wanted to be this cool romantic guy, and this yeah. that little flip of the hair and all that drains all of that, which was perfect for the moment. Yes, it but was it did not. It did not match up to my expectation of what I was supposed to be. But you know, really, what we think has nothing to do with what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's but the like character it, wasn't supposed the, to be right. Exactly, and I and now I That's look at it and it think so this precious. is really such a sweet thing, and so I totally appreciate it now. Yeah, you were having a moment that day when I was talking you, to you. I you, think you had just watched it. Part of your <laughs> thing that worked, part of the whole thing, is that you are kind of the opposite of cool. This is the <laughs> cool is not your thing. The opposite of cool. You are not cool. You are... <laughs> You are the hero to the kind of way. dorks everywhere. It's, it's, you know, like that's what's, that, but that's why women love you. You're sweet and innocent and darling and blush. Oh you're not God. cool. Yeah, but then you're, you're strappingly cool. handsome. So it's this, it's a very rare combination. It really is. It, hmm. It's a, it's a, it's it's a very unique combination. Like so square, well, he's hip. It's, well, th yeah. <laughs> and I, I'll, I will take that and. Uh, you know, now I, you know, you look at these things and I appreciate what was, what was going on at that time. So much of this is the, the kismet of, of just how you come into the world and mm -hmm. what you become, what you become as a function of how you were raised and all of that. And I think, I feel like for me, so much of this and for all of us, it's, we bring what we are, who we are to these situations, we're not inventing something out of whole cloth. There is, although Allison did sort of invent the, 
You know. I was going to say Allison. Yeah, you because Allison, who is one really of the are. really one of the you know one of the really sweet, kind people in the world, but is able to channel, yeah, you know, all of that that people love, and I think that's one of the reasons why people love you because they see that you're in on the joke. That's that's the gag. When when I started doing my one woman show, Confessions of Prairie Bitch, that was the whole thing. I just came right out and said, "Fine, why? Why am I a bitch? Why know why? I'll, do people know what I've had to put up with?" And that that yes, I was in on the joke. Yes, I get it. You all hate me because of that. They went, "Oh, oh, good, she knows." And then yeah. it's funny. And it's, <laughs> and it's funny. It's yeah, funny exactly. that anybody should have played that character. If it was somebody else, I would have think it was funny. So well, see, it's and it's such a difference between. And I always bring her up, and it's not fair to her. But but the difference between what you did and what Allison Balson did, and it's a very different take. And purposely so. She told me well, so. She said, I'm was, doing a different take. Yeah. And I, and I think she, she rolled the dice and Smart took a... Girl. Yeah. I mean, it was... Yeah. Yes, it was different. But what you had was in the evil, and I evil in quotes, enormous likability mm-hmm. in, in the evil... Allison Balson was just not enormously likable in this character. Hey, when when Catherine McGregor you is rolling her. her eyes, I mean, like like what is happening here? She was she was in the moment with Allison, and she was flummoxed as to what uh, to do. And you saw that in the performances. Just, hey. <laughs> like what? I love this little girl, but what is going on? And you know that. So Allison did her job. But it wasn't as likable. Mm. Well, it was love, effective. Lovable still villainy good. is a thing. What, one of my childhood role models, you know, the, the original broadcast of Peter Pan's Broadway thing with, with mm. Mary Martin, Cyril Richard as Captain Hook. Mm. We were in Connecticut. Bob and I were in Connecticut for a wedding. And I actually looked up Cyril Richard's grave. And we almost took time out to drive across the state of Connecticut to visit Cyril Richard's oh. grave. But uh, maybe when I do the event in Connecticut later Gotta this go year. Got to go see because, it. But I'm totally yeah, yeah. going because so Captain Allison, Hook, you, ever... you love him. You know? Do you ever rewatch the episode? God, yes. I always have. I <laughs> actors, so many Watches actors. Watches Bunny every night before bed. Over and over yeah, and over. yeah. It's, it's. There's two kinds of actors. There's actors who go, I cannot watch myself. I cannot watch myself. I can't look. I can't look. It's too and terrible. And others who can't take their and eyes they can't. off. Of them. And then I'm always like, come on, you got to watch the game tapes. If you play football, you can't say no. I can't look at it. You got to watch the game tape. Sorry, that's how it is. So I've always had yeah. to watch. And in in my house, you got a job. Everybody went, oh, it's on. We all gather around the TV. And oh yeah, no, snacks. definitely Bunch watch it actors. when it's new. Yeah. But do you watch it? Do you are you are you do you have your greatest hits that you watch on a regular basis? I don't have it. I don't like sit there and go, well, good morning. What your episode are we watching today? It's like there's always a marathon on somewhere yeah, sure. with Thanksgiving stuff. And and sure. Bob and I we like flipping channels. We like we yeah, we'll sit around we're watching Hawaiian Eye and have Gun Will Travel. We're like cracking ourselves up because we know half the guest stars on the show. I oh, I know her. Um because we're old. And we're watching these things and so it's like what's oh and Bob goes, This is a good episode? I go, Yeah, it's totally a good episode. And you know, we'll watch one. Um I've always enjoyed watching myself, and I do watch for things to go, okay, oh, that was good. Oh, yeah, mm, I could have gone a little more, mm, a little bit more there. Ah, oh, that was good. So I am watching the game tape, and, you know, and, and I thought it improved things. Or, but I also, if someone else had been Nelly, I still would have thought it was screamingly funny. And there's episodes where I watch, yes, if it was someone else, I would still laugh at this because this is insane. It is like home movies, though, because, like, oh, when Melissa and I are yeah. really little, and Melissa Gilbert and I sound like we've been sucking helium for <laughs> out. Cut, ew, but she died. Laura Engel, no, I also. I'm like, is, is there something wrong with the sound on my television? We're mice. What's, what the, is... what's the game where you have the fight about Uncle John versus Uncle John? Ring a ring a Rosie. I yeah. say Uncle John. It's adorable, right. yeah. and we sound it's like little cute. little cartoon mice. And I crack up <laughs> when I watch that. And yeah. but I remember stuff. I do. I watch it, and my brain goes back to when we we're filming. Oh, that was the day we had the fried mm. chicken at lunch. We had the fried chicken, mm. and they almost ran oh, out wow. of the potato salad. And the thing. You can go oh, back to that. And then I sometimes, no oh God, I was so much under stress because that's when you know, I had the algebra test later that week and I had to, I mean stuff is coming back because of teenage years brutal brutal and I have no recollection I will not get graphic but I can go through the list and tell you which episodes were that time of the month oh wow really wow my memories. best work actually oh, memories <laughs> PMS can be your friend in certain <laughs> situations. See, Let's and you just don't say. even know what we go through. No, I don't. <laughs> That'll I do it every it. time, <laughs> saying that. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello. 
When you visit Simi Valley, California, you are stepping into the pages of history. Go from the pioneers to the presidents. Explore beautiful wildflowers, hike through iconic Hollywood locations, and end your day aboard the actual Air Force One at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum. I can tell you I've done it. It's incredible. And throughout this summer, take the Little House 50th Anniversary Bus Tour at Big Sky Movie Ranch. Less than 15 minutes from Los Angeles and 30 minutes from Universal Studios, Simi Valley has small-town charm with big-time history. Go to visitsimivalley.com for more information. And we also want to thank Alexander GMC of Simi Valley, Golden State Water Company, Marketing Scape, Strathern Historical Society, WM, formerly Waste Management, and Vista at Simi Valley. And the Little House 50th Anniversary bus tours will continue. Yes. And we, so we did our first two. They will continue on July 20th, on August 3rd, and on September 14th. Go to simivalleychamber.org, select Little House 50th Anniversary, and then bus tours to get your tickets. I, I need to check my calendar and see if I cannot pop in and be the tour guide on one or two of them buses those days. I did the two tours back to back that day. We did. It was lovely. We were smashed. We were smashed. How it, awesome to get a tour with Nellie Olson or Elma. Yeah, no, no. It was That's really insane. fun. Pamela great. has done tours. Oh, yes. uh, Pamela Roy Lance has done tours. Charlotte Randall Yerke. Charlotte did Randall Yerke, our, one, our script, wonderful script supervisor, script. dialogue coach. She's done tours. She does a very unique tour that's very specific to a crew experience. She knows we, everything. Yeah, no, she's great. I think you know we were going to continue with some questions here, but oh, I yeah. think we, I think we need to jump, jump to Monte Carlo, right now. Let's unless, unless, Carlo. unless you and, feel and like your the, book. I think there's all we can always ask more questions. Questions we are can. a feature of our show, but this. This fresh return from Just Monte back. Carlo from the other side of the pond, that has to be addressed. It was epic. Yeah. So okay. let's let's we, talk we about need that. To hear. Yes, please, so Allison. There is a thing in Monte Carlo in Monaco called the uh, International Television Festival. And it's fantastic. The International Television Festival. Everybody knows about Cannes in the south of France that you have the. For some reason, people don't know about the International Television Festival of Monte Carlo that's been going on for over 60 years since oh, there was television. Wow. It's wow. been going for years. It's huge, huge stars. Uh, was it Morgan Freeman was there? Um, wow. d- d- ben Vereen was there. Uh, the cast, NCIS, uh, Weatherly, uh, Pablo Dakota. Everybody was there. They've, I've been there several times. And I've been there when Cast of Big Bang Theory was there. Huge, huge. The, the networks will often send a show that is about to start airing in France or other countries. And mm-hmm. it's enormous. First time I went, I said, wait, why am I here? Because I looked at the list and they were all current series and brand new series and stuff that was just now streaming or just now hitting France. And then Alison Arkham, Little House in the Prairie. And I went, one of these things doesn't belong here. <laughs> and I said, what's, what's going on? And they said, oh, well, these shows are all fabulous, but some of them haven't even started airing here. We don't know them as well. Some of them, we don't even know who the heck these people are. You, we know. You're kind of the fan favorite. You're part of our culture at this point, and then them. So I'm like, okay, great. So I got to go several times. I was on the jury once. It was amazing. I judged. So when wow. when you're on the jury, you're judging a I got, contest of I, new television. I got shows mini series. Or... Okay. There's like TV okay. shows, mini series, TV movie, a whole bunch of things. I got mini series. Rosanna Arquette was the head of the jury, and I was on a jury with like an Italian director uh, and a Spanish actress. She, and I have couple of different opportunities to work with Rosanna she Arquette. Was, she was uh, lovely. Was she? She was fantastic. I I met her. I, she was working her okay. own jury doing like the big series. One. I, she was awesome that day. And so I get there and there's all these people from all over the world and I watch mini series from Spain, England, America, Japan, France, all over the world. It's like one episode. And Japan won and we're kind of blown away because we're kind yeah. of like, oh, well, this is the one. And, the, and then we watch a Japan one and we're all sobbing hysterically going, it's like, that's okay. Um, so yeah, it's <laughs> really awesome you see all these great shows and they always have big screenings so this one was you go and there's the opening ceremonies and the Prince of Monica Prince Albert comes on stage and does a speech in English and French and they mm. talk about what they're gonna do and Morgan Freeman comes out and they give him an award and this whole thing and, and the, the voice you hear the voice you'll hear the, 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 the great the voice. Voice. even better the voice. they said since he's dubbed here yes we have the man who dubs Morgan Freeman's <gasps> voice in French 
and they bring him out and they have him speaking. It, yes, yes, it was. It was the voice, but it was the voice. There's another guy who sounds like so, that. So, no, wait a minute. So, but you heard Morgan yes, spoke in English. He spoke. And the, and the French Morgan spoke. And then they Morgan brought out spoke. the French Morgan, who That's is the awesome. one who was in It was amazing. And then Did there's they this, make a bit out of it? Yeah, yeah, was it, it was, was. It was. It was. Just... Kind of, it was a little of both. One, it was kind of funny, and then oh we were gosh. like, "Oh my god, it's the guy!" And we all <laughs> went nuts because he was great. Wow, and wow. then, then they shared the movie that it's a mini series called The Gray House. Hmm. That's gonna be here. Watch this. Watch this. It's amazing. As they spoke on the panel about it, that they said, "Well, you had roots, and this is kind of a continuation of this kind of story." Oh, wow. um, it's about. It's like as a civil war is starting in this family in uh, Virginia mm-hmm. as they secede from the Union and all hell breaks loose and it's rough and, and it's fascinating because it's a white very posh southern family with a southern belle and what the poor southern belle dizzy lady doesn't realize is that her husband his sister the mother and the entire family are all totally abolitionists and helping slaves escape and they just didn't tell her <laughs> and it's kind of that what? part's kind of funny actually you kind of go oops she doesn't know um and it's it is it's there's violence and extremely distressing scenes it's heavy going it's great really? so, great house great house um so that was the big screening and then there were there's parties. It's parties and panels. It's press panels and parties. There's not an autograph show. There's nothing like that. So Leslie Landon mm-hmm. and Matt Laberto and Karen Grassley and, yes, Melissa Sue Anderson Woo-hoo! and me and our lovely Wendy, our baby Wendy Grace. Lou Lee, which is Wendy what Lou a Lee. cool thing for her to yes. be able to get a chance to do something. Like that. And everybody had like a two for bringing husbands and stuff and friends. Y'all and were very color coordinated too. I know. What was that? that? What was that? I kept thinking, you know, we should be texting each other and say, what are you wearing? And we didn't. And we would it, come downstairs. It was crazy. And the first time we came down, I said, so we all got the blue memo? And we all looked at each other and went, yes, apparently so. Love your pants. Oh my God, those pants. Oh my God, that your jacket. Where'd you get that jacket? And we're all in this blue blue and white ensemble as if we had been dressed by a stylist in the same room and then the next night apparently we all got the green memo i came down in this green and there's there's matt in a green suit i mean literally we were color coordinated there was a gold one too there was a gold the gold thing and then other people and then yeah and and karen was in the blue and the white when we're in the blue I don't know what the heck happened, but we all psychically color coordinated. It was genius. So, how did everybody do in the situation? Because this Amazing. is this was this was not a, a normal grouping, right? And it, no, and, and it's not an autograph show. You sit down and think, no, the only autographs at all. There was a little party, the uh, tea party, basically. We got cake. There was a cake presented to us at the big fan panel because it was a press panel. It was all the press all over the way spoke. Then we went to another room, a huge room with fans who'd all gotten a special ticket thing, and they asked us questions. Then we went to a party where they presented us with a giant cake that had all of Walnut Grove, all the buildings I built out of cake. I saw that picture. Very cool. Yeah, we did, yeah. we didn't yeah. get any. We yeah. did not get any cake. I'm still mad. We didn't, uh, we didn't get did, any. You didn't get to take... Oh. No, no, did we didn't anyone, get any. Did anyone no, have cake? No, no, They no. took us to a party where they present with a different cake. <laughs> okay. It was white. It had strawberries. It was lovely. And we had that. And that was where there was a group of fans who like, they had to win a lottery and get a special ticket to come. And they brought like their model of the little house or a DVD to sign, little mementos, and we signed those. And mm-hmm. so eventually we figured out, Matt figured out, don't sit behind this table. Let's just get up and walk around the room. It'll go faster. And we're like, you're right. We all followed him. Um, so it was really cool. But yeah, it was a very different grouping because we have our hardcore. We had Wendy and me who right. go to everything. Right. And right. then we had Karen who goes to like one or two things. Right. And then we had Matt and we had Leslie who goes to one or two things. Right. And then we had Matt and Melissa's who do not go to things, who just don't go to things. Right. And they were having a high <laughs> old time. Great. Which was like amazing. It was a very interesting group. So the chemistry and dynamic was completely different than what you and I go through on these weekends. Mm-hmm. And it worked. It shouldn't have worked. And it worked. And it was amazing. Um, the panel, you'd have thought we rehearsed. We got for the press panel. And they started asking things. And people were suddenly telling these stories. Um, Melissa Anderson, because she only used Sue because she was a kid and she had to because oh. the SAG thing she had right. to. And she's really like, seriously? Right. No, she's just Melissa. Um she started talking about Michael and about the whole thing of when she went, and she spontaneously burst into tears and cried during um, the breast panel. Yeah. Yeah. She was amazing. Um, and we all started talking, and we were hanging out, and there may have been some wine and some champagne involved on certain occasions. Yeah, we, we I know you threatened a margarita. picture of margaritas. Right. I, see, this uh, is the thing. I have always said, and I just want to say, now, 
Okay, a long time ago, I met a guy on Jim Jim Scotland in Canada, in Vancouver, just saying, and we hated each other. I mean hated each other. It was somewhere in the 80s, and it was a bunch of actors, and I was there for some event, and God, we couldn't stand each other. And I, it was a bunch of stuff going on, but I mean, he was really rude. We did not like each other, and everyone knew that. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, those two. And then some years went by, and he had moved to Toronto, and I somehow got to Toronto, and he had contracted AIDS, and he was going through a lot of stuff, and we met up again. And we hit it off. We were going to the movies together. We were hanging out. I introduced him to a bunch of my friends who he stayed friends with the last day and were like taking yeah. care of him and stuff. Yeah. And we became extremely good friends and we're friends till his death. Things like that do happen. So sometimes people who are hideous little teenage girls and are like, towards each other for, on yeah. a show, yeah. can grow up and become much, much older ladies <clears throat> and go, so what the heck do you even do now anyway? Well, anyway, yeah. Yeah, you want some more? This is pretty good. And um, hang out on a beach with people from NCIS as the sun goes down in Monaco, yeah. drinking champagne, going, oh, great. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Wait, I'm having fun. What is happening? And decide that they maybe have more in common than they thought they did. So... So you d so what I, I guess this saying. means are we maybe going to see Melissa Sue Anderson on the podcast? This maybe? is entirely a thing. Um, as she said, she she doesn't do a lot of press and things. She she also doesn't do a lot of Zoom. She has to like call like somebody come over. Can you set the thing wow. up? Or, uh, what the heck, you know? And um, she's in New York and she's <clears throat> very chill. She doesn't. She's not going to be doing other like event events. This was she'd been to Monte Carlo once before, mm -hmm. and that's a whole story of how they lost her luggage and she had to borrow clothes from Jane Seymour, who ironically wow. is Doctor Quinn Medicine Woman. So yeah. yeah. Doctor Quinn, medicine woman dressed and, and one and of the most beautiful thing. women ever to work lovely, on television, lovely. as and far as I can tell. Her yeah. charity work, advocacy for yeah, women yeah. and children. <clears throat> Woo -hoo, just saying. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, so she, um, but she did this because everybody likes going to Monaco and Monte Carlo for four days yeah, to d be yes. wined and dined, and the meals and the food and the parties and the panels and meeting people, getting your picture taken with the guy from NCIS. Woo! Oh, yeah, and yes, so everybody goes, and they have. And there was a big day off on Sunday. Of course, I had like more interviews because I got a show in October, and yeah, so I had more interviews. But then Sunday afternoon, we got you know people were sightseeing and hanging out, and and she went on to somewhere else in France because your daughter was with her and everything. Well, yeah, I just I'm just curious, like, what is the state of Little House in France? I mean, we know for you it's great because you you have this. You've cultivated this incredible audience. But what is the state of Little House in, in France now or in the European television They're community? Gaga for it. They could hardly fit all the people in the room for the press panel. They were jammed in wow. there from all different countries and absolutely awash in questions. The fan one was an enormous theater that was absolutely packed and full. And I they saw a video of that. You saw it. They wow. screamed for everyone. Okay, they did start chanting, Alison, Alison. That did happen. Um, and they sang the little house, you know, they do the la, 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 la. They do, there's no words, yes. there's no words, right, but they right. sing it. And that nice. was when Matt turned to me and said, so this is pretty much what goes on every time you come here, right? And I'm like, yeah, 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 it kind of does. Um, so yeah, but they did They did chant my name. Um, but then they kind of got into the spirit when we'd arrive for things. You've seen the place where you arrive, there's a lot of video of us in our beautiful outfits at the big Grimaldi form, and there's these huge walls of fans. And you try to something, they go, okay, it is tradition to, yes, stop and sign some of those autographs in the street. Mm -hmm. Pace yourself. Do like a few here, a few there, and tell them you'll get more later, you know. And we did. And they did start going, Karen, Karen, and stuff, and chanting, Melissa, Melissa. They did start chanting, That's Wendy, great. Wendy, and stuff for everybody eventually. It was great. That's awesome. I, I think we need to, we have awesome. to, we have to wrap this up. So uh, I think we need to take I'm one. I'm just basking in the glow. I know, but we need to take one more treaty quick break between Allison and Melissa. Yeah, yes. no, I think it's it's fantastic, and we we will explore that further. And I think those of you who listen to this pos podcast regularly, I think will be, I think would be very pleased to have uh, Melissa Sue Anderson or Melissa Sloan. Is her is Mrs. Sloan, Sloan, Mrs. Sloan you, now, buddy. Mrs. Come Sloan. and come and uh, chat with us about all things Little House. I think that would be fantastic. Obviously, we'd love to have Matt come. We want to have Karen come. Karen has said she's going to come. Well, go she, get Karen. It's funny, hard to get her to come here 
she got to Monte Carlo. I just don't know if I can understand Oh, honey, that. if they call your house and said, uh, yeah, we got two business class tickets to Monte Carlo. Yeah, so, and you're staying okay. at the Monte Carlo oh, Bay, okay. Bay Hotel. And, oh, gift tent. I did hit the gift uh, suite on the way out and got, like, bags of, like, makeup and perfume. Just saying. There was so much. There was a makeup, there was a makeup sponsor. Oh, did you know we all had hair and makeup in our rooms? They sent up a hairdresser and a makeup yeah, artist really to good. our rooms before each event. In the morning, before we went downstairs oh and pressed. And then again wow. in the afternoon before wow. the party, the wow. makeup artists there, usually from Italy, they were marvelous, and they would come up and do our hair and our makeup I in just, our rooms. I mean, what a what a treat for everybody to saying. have a chance to. That's why we that. went. Of course, everybody best, went to text. that. So let's take <laughs> the a best. The best text I ever got was from Allison in Monte Carlo, going. She knows about the acrylic nails. She knows about the acrylic nails. <laughs> Talking about Melissa Sue She totally does. And she has a fascinating actual backstory explaining the whole we thing. We shall save that for when we'll she comes. We'll save that when she comes. Let's take a break already. When you visit Simi Valley, California, you're stepping into the pages of history. Go from the pioneers to the presidents. Explore beautiful wildflowers. Hike through iconic Hollywood locations. Some of those are ours. And end your day aboard the actual Air Force One at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum. Ronald Reagan, by the way, loved Little House on the Prairie. Loved Little House on the Prairie. Throughout the summer, this summer, you can take the Little House on the Prairie 50th anniversary tour at Big Sky Ranch. So keep your eyes open for that. Simi Valley, less than 15 minutes from Los Angeles, 30 minutes from Universal Studios. Simi Valley has small town charm with big time history. Go to visit SimiValley.com for more information. We are so grateful to SimiValley.com for their commitment to present the Little House 50th Anniversary Podcast. And who else are we going to thank, Pamela? We are going to thank... Cozy TV, Rodex, Modern Prairie, Price Ford, City of Simi Valley, Adventist Health, Simi Valley. I thank, think that's it. That's it. That's and it. thank you for your support of the Little House 50th Anniversary Podcast. <laughs> Prairie yes, Man plug that is book. out. Plug that You're book. off to a signing. You're off literally to yeah, a signing so from here. I am. But now, but in podcast time, Tonight, you and I are going to be the at, at the Grove, yes, uh, at the Grove for Barnes and Noble. 27th. Yes, yeah, and I'm the so, thank you for thank you for agreeing to come and lead the charge on that. I I am so appreciative. It's a wonderful place. I did my big book signing there at the Grove. It's fabulous. You will enjoy it very much. Well, I look. I'm really excited about it. And for those of you who are keeping an eye on. Uh, things to do with Simi Valley and the Little House 50th Anniversary Bus Tour. Circle July 20th, August 3rd, and September 14th as the three days. And so we're doing it one day a month in July, August, and September. More dates will be announced later in the fall as we go into the holidays. So, and you can go to um, simivalleychamber.org look for Little House 50th Anniversary and then bus tours to get your tickets. Now, yes, and there, this will all be in the show notes. So okay, good. So people need to know they'll be in the show notes. Excellent. And there are, and very important because we're going to have to blow through these really fast, cast appearances are coming up. And so if you're around the country, keep an eye open. Walnut Grove, July 19th to the 21st. Uh, we w- now there was an event scheduled for Keystone, South Dakota, for July twenty sixth to twenty eighth. It's it. going to move to September, so oh. uh, there will be more on that. And the weekend right before Walnut Grove, if you happen to be in the East Coast, Provincetown, Massachusetts, B Town. I'm doing three shows at the Red Room. Oh, awesome! So what are the 12, dates? Uh, twelve, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Okay, I do very good. At the Red Room in B Town. Very good. Yes, I will B-Town. be in Montclair, California, at a great, good place to read a book on August eighth. That's in Montclair, California. Hop, skip, and a jump from my hometown of Piedmont. Um, I will also be with Patrick Laberto, my lovely yes. wife Catherine, and the two babies, Baby Rose and and Baby, baby Grace, at the Hotel Tombstone 
in Tombstone, Arizona. Why we're going there August 16th hot. and 17th? <laughs> Much too hot. It's going to be very hot. But we're Air conditioning? Go- we're go- yeah, absolutely. Okay. They guarantee it. We'll be there uh, August 30th to September 1st. We will be in Connecticut. Yes. September 3rd and 4th in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We will be in Lyles, Tennessee at the Johnny Cash Farm September 14th and 15th. Um, I will be at Rocky Ridge Farm in Mansfield, Missouri, September 27th and 29th. So there is going to be a little conflict there with the rescheduled South Dakota. I will not be in South Dakota. I will be uh, in Mansfield. Are you doing the Laura Ingalls Wilder, Laura Ingalls Wilder, Wilder dinner? Day. This is yes. epic. The Laura yeah. Ingalls Wilder dinner is fabulous. He's doing the Laura Ingalls Wilder dinner. So go, it's, go, go. I will be at the State Fair in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh my God, October I love Tulsa. Second through fourth. I th- and I'll refine those dates. I, I did be, that one. I will be at the the Almanza Wilder Farm yes. in Malone, New York, October eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. And we will all be as that. a cast That's in Branson, Missouri, November fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth. And I think there's a Another a new date in Corsicana, Texas. There is also I have a new date August first, San Francisco at Oasis. Oh, you have a show. I have a show. Okay, so Charlotte's w- coming up. So we will publish all this in all. notes so everybody knows. But suffice it to say, we are busy and we're out there. It is the because it's the fiftieth anniversary year of Little House. We are doing our very best to get everywhere we can. Um, and for those of you who are interested in Prairie Man, there will be books at every one of these events. So, uh, and I will have my Sharpie ready and I, I hope to see you there. And we all hope to see you at all these places. That's, that's, I'll stop talking now. Go ahead, Pamela, wrap it up. Yes. And I'll be in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all like to be in Queens. I was like, in, you in, guys are tired Queens. Just listening just to your schedule. Born I'll there. be home. I'll be home. Maybe I'll zip up to Hartford to say. Oh, I think you should. You guys. That's close. Oh, yeah. you come have over, to. come over, come that's over. A, that's a home game for you. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Even Lancaster is, yeah. you know, they're both two hours. Really? Dude, right. take Maybe the ferry to Provincetown. I know, I know. That would be Just super saying. fun. Um, okay. Well, I, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm so happy that we were able to record this on the morning of your book launch, Dean. We're so happy for you. So uh, thank uh, you, This Pamela. is so exciting. This is the beginning of a new adventure. I love the book. Yes, I did get a copy. Well, a PDF copy. So I'm still waiting to see pictures of it. Yes, There's right. Pictures. You want, There's you know, pictures. Yes, you'll have yeah. pictures. Yeah. I, I thank but you it's both. A beautiful book. I thank you both for how lovingly supportive you've been of this. This is. These are obviously big moments in our individual lives. Thank you both for being so on board. My, my name's on the cover. Did I mention my name's on the cover? <laughs> my name's on the cover. Because it it's See, forward it by Melissa Gilbert and Allison Arngrum. <laughs> and they terrific too, by the way. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you. Keep the listener questions coming. I read all of them. I do collect them. We'll be doing questions every single week. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We will see you next time. Bob, get the wig. The clap up. There it is. Book launch. Yeah, book launch.